everyone welcome to my channel Autocar 09 and the long and storied history of American armored warfare. Certain vehicles have earned their place in the spotlight not because they were the biggest or most powerful, but because they were different and experimental, bold, even controversial. Among these, one vehicle stands out as uniquely strange yet unforgettable, the M50 Autos. Even now, in 2026, decades after its retirement, the Auto sparks discussion, debate, and admiration. A compact, heavily on tank destroyer that looked like a science fiction experiment. The Cold War, the Autos was unlike anything before or after it. Its legacy is not one of numbers or longevity, but of pure, innovative intent of born in a time when threats were evolving fast and new solutions had to be imagined quickly. The M50 Autos was developed in the 1950s, during a post-World War II era when the US military was re-evaluating the role of armor. The threat of Soviet armor advancing through Europe was growing, and military planners needed a vehicle that could stop a tank column in its tracks but it had to be light, mobile, and deployable by air. The name Autos itself means the thing in Greek, and it was fitting. No one had seen anything like it. Imagine a small, boxy track vehicle weighing less than 10 tons, yet bristling with six externally mounted 106mm recoilless rifles. This wasn't the tank in the traditional sense, it was a hunter. The Fondos was designed by the Ellis Chalmers Company, better known for manufacturing tractors and industrial equipment. Their goal was to make something nimble and devastating and a vehicle that could fire and maneuver faster than enemy tanks could react. The six recoilless rifles weren't just for show, they allowed the crew to fire multiple rounds in rapid succession, creating a storm of anti-tank firepower that could overwhelm even well-armored Soviet tanks of the era. Each rifle was manually loaded from outside the vehicle, which made reloading during combat risky. But the Antos was designed with a shoot and scoot strategy in mind. Fire a volley, then reposition before the enemy could react. Each of the rifles could be fired individually or in coordinated pairs or even all six in rapid sequence. With such a barrage, it was unlikely that any enemy tank would remain functional afterward. In addition to the recoilless rifles, the Antos was equipped with .50 caliber spotting rifles attached to each main barrel. These spotting rifles fired a special tracer round that simulated the trajectory of the main gun round. If the tracer hit the target, the 106mm round would too. This made the Antos surprisingly accurate for a vehicle of its size and complexity. In terms of mobility, the M50 was built light with a high power to weight ratio. It used a six-cylinder engine and torsion bar suspension, which made it nimble over rough terrain. Its light weight allowed it to be transported by cargo aircraft, helicopters, or even dropped by parachute out giving US forces a deployable tank killer that could arrive where it is was needed fast. In fact, the Antos was one of the few armored vehicles in the 1950s and 60s that could keep up with their born or marine forces. Its armor, However, was minimal. It was designed to protect against small arms and shrapnel but not heavy weapons. If hit by tank fire, the Andos would be destroyed instantly. But again, its philosophy wasn't to slug it out, it was to ambush, destroy, and disappear. During the Vietnam War, the M50 Andos found its niche. Though it had originally been developed to counter tanks, there were few tank-on-tank -tank battles in Vietnam. Instead, the Antos was repurposed for infantry support and urban combat. Its six recoilless rifles proved incredibly effective against bunkers, enemy fighting positions, and fortified structures. Marines especially came to appreciate the Antos, often using it in cities or jungle environments where its compact size and explosive firepower could break stalemates. One of the Antos' most famous moments came during the Battle of Hue in 1968. Part of the Tet Offensive, the Andos was used in direct street fighting, blasting apart enemy strongholds with terrifying effect. Its short length and agility allowed it to turn tight corners, and its raw firepower could level enemy-held buildings in a single salvo. The Viet Cong and North Vietnamese forces feared the Andos often abandoning fortified positions when one rolled into view. Despite these successes, the Andos had limitations that eventually led to its retirement. Reloading was a major issue. After firing, 
The crew had to exit the vehicle to reload each rifle manually, exposing themselves to danger. There were attempts to develop an automated loading system, but it proved too complex for the compact frame. Additionally, the recoil from the 106mm gun say even though they were recoilless to produced backblast that made firing in enclosed spaces hazardous. By the late 1960s, Newer armored vehicles with turret-mounted cannons and improved armor began to replace the Udos. Vehicles like the M551 Sheridan, while also controversial in their own right, promised greater versatility and firepower in a more traditional package. The Udos, while loved by those who operated it, was seen as a relic of a specific tactical era that was passing.